So today I have this Zuni Petapoint cuff bracelet and there were a number of stones missing in this beautiful heirloom. Well, not missing, but they were um, cracked. Maybe one had fallen out. I don't remember, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that needed to be replaced. And it's really old because it had the sawdust filling in there so that it would raise the stone to the bezel height so that these were all in line. So now I have to take pieces like this and cut them down to fit inside of these little settings in order to get it back to wear in shape. <laughs> One important thing that I wanted to point out about these old native Petapoint pieces and a lot of other intricate pieces is that all of these little settings were put on and then the stones were fit to go inside of them and that's how these were made now in order to do repairs on them <laughs> like let's say one of these bezels had been torn off or half of it was missing and the owner of the bracelet wanted to replace it to make sure that it's a hundred percent good to go again all of these stones would have to come out and then the soldering could happen with the heat. Um, you can't have the torch on this with all these stones in there. And then after the repairs had been done, all the stones would have to be reset. And you'd have to figure out which one fit into which, <laughs> which bezel at which point. So it's a very intricate piece to repair. And that's why the best solution is to do what you can without taking the whole thing apart. Because that would take lots of time, labor, and money. To do that for that kind of a repair um, you know if if you got half of a bezel missing on one of these something like that you know if you had a lot of integrity lost in the bezel and you still wanted to do an affordable repair you could use an epoxy to put the stone into the seat of that bezel down in there and then press what bezel you did have left up around the stone to help hold it in place and that's going to be a much more feasible solution. But here, I think the bezels are good enough to hold my little rock piles in place. So I'm going to get going on these. I have a couple cut already and more to work on to see what's going to fit in there. Uh, one thing that I want to talk about is you're going to see me holding this against the wheel. That's just a very crazy method that I have. <laughs> so I have an idea of where the stone is and I could push it up and I know it's going to stay there. Um, if you were to do it up here on the wheel, it would shoot down or shoot away from you. But down here, you have much more control over it. And when I'm pressing it into the wheel, I'm not grinding my fingertip on it. I'm only grinding the stone. So it's going to look a little weird, but... Just hang in there. So you can kind of see. You know, maybe it catches the tip a little bit, but it's not crazy. Ugh! And that white stuff going in the water, that's the stone disintegrating away. It's almost flat needs more on this side. Okay, so then we see. Too long.
loaded with blues and that makes me happy and I'm sure that'll make her happy too. It's a very healthy bracelet now. Everything is tightened down and in place. So what I did, because I couldn't film all this intricacy with my current setup, <laughs> was I placed all the stones in where I was going to have them. And then when I came into my shop here, I used a little tiny paper towel and I dried out each little thing where I had been cutting the stone for it. And then I set it in until it was level and then I pressed the bezel around it. Um, now for pressing the bezel, on the very exterior, I would use this bezel pusher. And the inside and between them, you don't have any room without damaging the stones. So I used a dental tool. I don't even know what kind of dental tool this is, but I would pick the bezels to the stone, like very carefully, and then I'd use this round part of the tool to push the bezel-y tops onto the stone for each side of it, so that also stabilized the other stones, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, in terms of being able to put the stones into the bezel, some of them were tricky because when they had originally glued the stones in, the wood and adhesive still was inside there, even though I tried getting it all out. So I just got this little kit um, where it has all these random diamond bits. And I took a tiny one and I stuck it in there and I would kind of do this very delicately because if you weren't careful you could come out the back and ruin the setting and we all know what that means that means take 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 out fix 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 put back in back in back in back in a million times <laughs> so that looks weird a little bit of quartz on that stone but um it went well so i'm very excited it was just um, the high, I think the hardest part was cutting the stones <laughs> to fit in there because it was a lot of grinding, fitting, grinding, fitting, dropping, you know, little tiny things. Maybe there's a better way, but you know, I'm not Zuni, so I have no idea. <laughs> Anyways, you guys, um, thanks for following me along in this process. Um, it was very hard filming the cutting of the stones because I had a tripod wrapped around my neck. <laughs> ah, I gotta find better ways to show you how to do these things, okay? I'll work on it. <laughs> Alright, have fun. I will see you next time.